it's just over a year since I bought this painted shell on eBay and today we reached a major milestone with this car for the first time since I've had it I was able to actually sit on a seat and admire the work that we've done so far and it's been extensive every single little piece of this car has been refurbished all the bars and screws in the door everything in the dash all the woodwork's been replaced we've put back seats in it springs for this you name it we've done it we've had to source bits for the seat belts it's been an enormous task and an enormous challenge but we are slowly but surely getting there um the last thing I had to do on this car was make up the foam mats that go behind the carpet. I'm just going to finish this video with a few tips about how to do that because we had an awful lot of interest on the last video I did and lots of questions. So I hope that at the end of this video is just going to address those questions and help you replace your mats with an OEM look if you need to do that. There's been a lot of interest and questions about making up your own OEM looking mats. So I'm just going to spend a few minutes in this video just giving you some tips of how you can replicate some of these features. So this is the driver's side mat here and there's an indentation that runs all the way along it um, for the cable. What I'm going to do first is show you how to cut out an indentation in that foam. Now the easiest way to cut this channel here is using a finger file. And that is how we're going to do it. The finger file will just cut a um, nice even ridge all the way along there. You just got to make sure you don't press too hard and go all the way through the foam. And there you have it, a nice groove. Now don't forget this will be covered by vinyl, so that groove does not have to be perfect. You've got two choices when you cut that groove. You either go straight or you go at an angle and cut two Vs that meet in the middle. It doesn't have to be too perfect because this foam is very forgiving and when that's covered in vinyl, that'll look pretty much exactly the same as that. The finger file route, we are using a very aggressive sandpaper there. I think that's a 40 or 60 grit. Now, if you don't happen to have a finger file, another way to cut an even groove is to get the foam and bend it back on itself and then use a very sharp knife like that just to slice off the top of that. And what you'll find is when you slice that off, you'll get a beautiful U-shaped channel so we have just glued or used a self-adhesive backing to stick a piece of that foam around an old broom handle and just clamped it in here. What I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do now is slice a nice even slice off the top of it. And there we have it. Obviously you'll be sticking the shiny side down like that. And once you've stuck that down with a bit of glue, that will stick down nice and flat and give you the perfect profile. The other way you can get those um, profiles is using a piece of profiled foam like this. Now this is pipe insulation, um, or they also use it for wrapping around scaffolding so you don't bash your head, and also pool noodles. You can just once again take a very sharp knife and cut the top off there, and that'll give you a beautiful profile, and then just use a bit of the trim fix to glue that on. This is the passenger footwell mat. It's actually much harder to do than the other one. And um, we've managed to get all these profiles in, which is good. Um, the one or two creases here, but I don't think that's something you'll necessarily ever see because that will obviously be on the underside with the carpet on top. An additional bit of advice I would do is if you've got your vinyl laid on the table, the sticky side up, if you lay the foam on top of it and you bend the foam like that, when the foam then straightens out, you'll get a whole load of creases in it. So it's better just to try not to bend the foam and to lay it on flat on top like that. And if your foam has a slight bend in it, um, just take that into account when you actually put the vinyl on because it's very easy to get creases like that if you put the vinyl on without stretching it the right way. Another tip I would give you, this goes in the front passenger side footwell. And if you stick this onto the vinyl and roll it down like that, what you'll end up doing is getting a whole load of creases in here. You actually need to 
be rolling it the other way. And in order to do that, we're gonna use this kitchen bin here. We're gonna put the vinyl on the back of the bin. So when we come to roll this, it'll kind of hold this piece of foam in the correct shape, which is angled that way. So what we are doing is sticking this on at an angle like that, using this kitchen bin here to give us that curve. And what you end up with is this here, and there will be no creases in that when you fit that in the car. If you'd have done it the other way, as I say, this thing would contract and you'd end up with a whole load of creases. You can see that that all fits nicely in there. That'll look nice when we've kind of covered that with the black vinyl. Once again, I'm going to put the vinyl around the bin, take the sticky backing off, and then put this on top of the sticky vinyl like that. And then when you turn the whole thing round and stretch it out, the vinyl won't have any creases in it. Just taking the plastic backing off here. It should just be a matter of laying this on. Now we'll just cut off the excess and then trim it down neatly. Next up, we're just going to make little cuts so we can fold this over and then we'll trim it. There we go, that's not perfect, but that's pretty darn good. Now what I've done is I've cut these edges long and then looped them over and stuck them onto the sticky back of there. And I'm not going to take this off and actually stick it to the footwell because I know from experience, once you stick that on, you'll never get it off again without ripping all the foam. So the next person who buys this car can do that if they like, because you have to remember that a carpet will be over there. So fools rush in, and like a fool, I rushed in because I've got that perfect curve, but of course the footwell curves this way, <laughs> not that way. I don't think that's a tragedy. As I say, that will be covered by a um, carpet. But when you put that over the bin, if you're doing it um, that method, just remember to get the curve not going that way, but actually going that way. I'm going to finish this video here. In the next series of videos, we're going to be starting to move on to the engine. First of all, I've got a little bit of electrics to do, hook up the blower motor, test the dials inside the car, etc. We're going to have to reconnect all these brake lines, get a new brake master cylinder and check to connect all the vacuum lines. That should be fun. I see that the starter motor is not connected in this car. We've made a start on refurbing the air filter. And um, once we get the car running, we then probably make a start on the bumpers, and the exhaust, and possibly, I haven't decided yet, think about the taking the subframe out and powder coating it and refurbishing the underside of the car, but I'm not sure about that.